Hey everyone, Jarek here. I know, I'm not dead, I'm still here, I'm still making videos, so I'll post one every once in a while, you don't need to spam a video account like you've been doing. But today we're here for a review of an A&K PKM. When you get this out of the box, you will only get the gun and a 5000 round box magazine. It won't come with the fake dummy bullets or a battery, so you need to get those separately. If you really want fake dummy bullets, that is. This gun's quality impresses you right out of the box. It's made entirely out of stamped steel with a polymer grip and polymer stock. Even the clumsiest of support players won't break this gun. But keep in mind, this being this sturdy does have a consequence. It is heavy. Now this may be a pro depending on how you look at it, but either way it's 20 pounds and having to lift around 20 pounds all weekend long or all game long gets very tiring very quick. You may be saying to yourself, ah oh, 20 pounds isn't that much, but you would be very very wrong. You're not realizing you're having to shoulder and lift this thing all game. And when you're doing that it quickly gets tiring. So if you're dedicated on becoming that support player and you want a machine gun, just keep in mind this thing is very heavy, and if you still want to go for it, lift some weights before you buy this gun. The only downsides to the looks of this gun is the giant orange flash hider. Thankfully it is just a flash hider and it has standard 14mm counterclockwise thread so you can replace it with whatever you want. Internally this gun uses a short type motor and a version 8 gearbox that is very similar to that you've seen in A&K's other LMGs. The quality for a Chinese clone is actually quite good, and I have no concern of anything inside of it breaking. If something does break, the parts are easily interchangeable regardless. The gearbox also features a quick change spring system, so if this gun's firing too hot for your needs, you can just put in a softer spring, or vice versa. I've heard some people being iffy on micro switch triggers, but this gun does have a micro switch trigger. Personally, I like these. It means you won't burn out your trigger contacts with sustained fire, and since you're going to be playing a supportive role, you're probably going to have to lay down suppressing fire. On top of this, it gives you a better trigger response. It makes it really obvious when the trigger would quote unquote break, although it doesn't really break with an AEG, but it doesn't feel as mushy as other AEGs either. It just gives a good feel to it. One of the cooler features of this weapon is that there's a MOSFET chip on the front of the gun. There are two different buttons. With these two buttons, you can raise and lower your fire rate. Now, typically I would just keep the fire rate as fast as possible since this gun doesn't have an insane rate of fire to begin with, but having that option is a rather cool thing. Especially since you're going to be playing supportive, and you may not want to shoot as many BBs as possible, maybe you just want to lay down suppressing fire kind of slowly and reserve ammo. The hop-up unit is very easily accessible, it's simply a wheel underneath the top tray. You can adjust this as you're firing, whenever you please. I found the hop-up unit to be actually pretty effective. Before talking about that, let's talk about how you load the magazine. The magazine is actually fairly easy to load. You simply open up the mag, pour in 5,000 BBs or however many you want to load in, put the battery into this extra compartment on the side, and plug the battery into both the magazine and the gun. The magazine itself feeds off of your battery, so no need for an extra battery. This is very convenient and I found that it feeds perfectly fine. There are three different settings on the bottom of the magazine, auto feeding, or feeding whenever you just manually push the button, and the other one is obviously off. There's no extra hassle, there's no tube to load into your gun, you simply just click it onto the bottom of your gun. From there, let's move on to the performance of this gun. When I chronoed it with 0.2 gram BBs and 11.1 .1 lipo, I found the average FPS to be 420 to 430 feet per second, quite a bit higher than the 380-400 mark that most websites advertise. High enough to where a lot of woodland sites will not let you use this gun and you'll likely have to swap out the spring. And you'll definitely not be allowed in any CQB arena, although why in the world would you ever take this into a CQB place you're a madman. The rate of fire was around 900 RPM with 11.1 .1 lipo, which is slightly below average but is still respectable and really not that bad. This is what the MOSFET chip setting turned up all the way, for the record. As for the accuracy, this gun has an insanely tight grouping. It didn't matter that I had the hop-up unit not adjusted correctly. If you'll notice, the BBs kind of arched down a little bit, and that was totally my bad I didn't adjust the hop-up unit. And it didn't matter if I fired it on semi or full auto just laying down BBs downrange, the gun's accuracy was not affected. 
I was shooting at a small 4 inch 22 target at 75 feet away and it was simply drilling this target. This thing has almost sniper like accuracy and you definitely are not going to miss your target and you have a lot of BBs to work with even if you do. So where does that leave us with this gun? Let's go over the pros and cons, starting with the pros. It's built like a tank has a convenient and easy magazine to use, uses a standard gearbox with interchangeable parts that is overall good quality, and has amazing performance. Now let's go to the cons. Well, it's actually kind of difficult. I can't really list it being heavy as a con truthfully because the actual PKM also weighs 20 pounds, so it's just sort of being authentic. But at the same time, I don't want to look around a 20 pound weapon with me all weekend, or all game, if you're only going for a one day game. So whether that's a pro or a con really depends on how you interpret it. But really the only con of this weapon is the dedication you were willing to put into it. If you want to play that supportive role, if you want to carry around a 20 pound weapon, and if you want to drop the money on this thing, then it's entirely worth it. This thing will cost you around $400 to $600 depending on where you go, so it's not a simple easy pick up buy that's not really going to be a big purchase. You're going to have to drop some money. So again, it really depends on your dedication. If you want that PKM and you want to fill that role, then 100% this is for you. But if you're unsure, I would take a second thought about that. That all aside, this is an amazing weapon that is definitely a good product. My name is Jarek. Thanks for watching this review and consider watching the outro and supporting my other channels. See you next time. Hey, so if you enjoyed this content, you might enjoy the content I post on my other two channels. One of them is video game related, and I focus mostly on shooters there, so if you're into guns, you'll probably feel right at home. And my Scaly House Productions channel focuses on some silly shenanigans of my roommates and local friends. I know it's overstated, but subscribing, liking, commenting, favoriting, doing all that stuff legitimately does help content creators, and the more you do it, the more I can post. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you guys over on my other channels.